I'm gonna take a solid guess. Is the range all real numbers? Yes! Oh. <laughs> Right? It's all real numbers because you go infinitely down, infinitely up, and there's no break in between. It's all real numbers. Who means right. there's a bunch of decimals? No. Yes. All right. So interval of increasing. So it's increasing. So you always look at it left to right. So it's infinitely this way. And it keeps going up, keeps going up, keeps going up. And it stops going up here. So so I'll go negative infinity up to 3. And remember, you're looking at the x values, not the y values. So you're looking at the x values. So I stop at 3. I'm going down from 3 to 5. So let's go ahead and put that for the decrease in 3 to 5. Okay. But then it's going up from 5 to infinity. So union 5 to infinity. Okay. Now, that's the interval notation for that. The inequality notation goes like this. For negative infinity to 3, you can look at it this way. It's from 3 to the left. So that means x is less than 3. Or 5 and up, so that means x is greater than 5. So that's that one. Or you can do interval of decreasing. When they have both, 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 both endpoints are numbers, not infinity. You just do 3 less than x less than 5. So these, so I've wrote it two ways, right? I've done interval notation, and I use inequalities. You do not have to give me both ways. You should be able to recognize both ways, because we are taking a test on this on Schoology. Oh, no. Okay? Oh, yeah, I saw that. No, you didn't. I haven't published it yet. Well, I saw some quiz. Yeah, that one's that one's like over the break. What are those do? Oh, what? That's due this week. Wait, what? There was okay. a break on Schoology? Yeah, but it's due this week. It's not like. Um. It's just on adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, polynomials. Oh no. Ah. Same as that last test. Not too I can give you the idea. Okay. Yeah. I did. All the grades I have, it's I have. Just two of them. It should be fine. It's just two. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I didn't notice one class. No one had taken it. I don't know if it was this class or not. Anyway, maximum. That's three. Maximum. Where's the maximum? That's the higher. Three point one three point four. Three comma thirteen point four. What about a minimum? That's five eight. Five, eight. So minima is a low point. Maxima is a high point. End behavior. So remember, end behavior always looks the same. At least the way you should write it. X to positive infinity of the function. Remember, this is the left, right side. This is the right side. So you look at the right side. What's going on on the right side? It's going straight up. So that's positive infinity. Are you okay? Yeah. All right. So end behavior is we're looking at what's going on at the ends. Okay? And the notation is this part here. This part really doesn't change. So you have this one and you have this one. See, it looks the same. That's negative infinity. No matter what that looks like, that's negative infinity. Okay. Wait, what? <laughs> that one, so it's x to negative infinity, x to positive infinity. So, but really, this is just a really fancy way of saying what's happening on the right-hand side. So on the right-hand side, this is shooting up to infinity. So put infinity. This negative infinity really means left side. What's going on on the left side? The left side, it's going down infinitely. So we say it's negative infinity. So for our problems, the answers are going to look almost identical to each other. In fact, except for example three, this has been the answer for all of them, for end behavior. I think example three is the only one that's different. Yeah. Okay. 
So this part here, the LIM, that's the letters LIM, that's an X, that's an arrow pointing to the right, that's an infinity symbol. And then the name of the function. If I don't give you the name of the function, just call it F. Like here, I didn't give you the name of the function, right? If nothing's labeling that what the name of the function is. So I just call it F. And then you can have an infinity over here or you can have a number over there. But when we're doing these polynomials, it's always going to be infinity or negative infinity. Okay. We won't get numbers until fourth quarter. Oh, Maybe. God. That sounds wrong. Maybe not. We may not even get there. Okay. Zeros with their multiplicities. So zeros is where it crosses the x-axis. So it crosses the x-axis here. So that's the one place it crosses. X equals negative 1.551. Now, you don't have to mention any multiplicity because there's nothing weird going on. It's not like bouncing off or anything. Right? So that has no multiplicity. Okay. All right. Now let's talk about the minimum degree. So that means you have to count the number of turns it has. Okay? So this is an easy to understand term. That's one turn there, and that's one turn there. The difficult to understand one is the one that's happening here. Okay? When it does this, we count them as two turns. So that's two turns, three, four. And then the degree is number of turns plus one. So it's five. So that's the answer. It's the number of turns plus one. Okay. I'm going to do another example. I know it looks like we're out of examples, but I'm going to do the problem one from the homework because there were no examples like that in my list of examples. I'm doing number one from the homework. Okay. All right. This is number one from the homework. ASGN 214. All right. Now, this one, the range is not all real numbers. So, what's the lowest this will go? Um, negative 1.935. Okay. When I actually ask for the number for the lowest, you want to give me the y value. Okay. So, it's going to go from negative 4.813 and up. Right? It goes up from there. So we say y is greater than or equal to negative 4.813. There's another way to write this, but we're just going to write it that way. Why is it not all real numbers? Because it doesn't go below that number. Like, it doesn't go as low as negative 5. Right? It doesn't go as low as negative 6. It goes as low as that, and then it goes up from there. Yeah. What's the odd degree n behavior? I'm going to get to that. Okay. okay. I'm just doing the one more example that I didn't have in the other one. Okay. Okay. Now, so that's the only special one, right? So I, I'm, I'm, I'm addressing Tripp's question again. Why isn't this one all real numbers? Because it doesn't go infinitely down, right? It actually, that's as low as it gets. This is the absolute lowest it gets. Like on number two, this suggests that it keeps going down indefinitely, and this keeps going up indefinitely. So this is going down infinitely, this is going up infinitely. But this one, look at the ends. Both ends are going up. Okay? So that's as low as it gets. That's so that's why it's y is greater than or equal to that number. There's other graphs like that too, like 3, 4, 6. Yes. So now you've seen an example that are like those. Okay? All right. Now, what are the intervals of increasing? So let's kind of just do both intervals of increase and decrease at the same time. So here, it's decreasing here. Okay? I'm looking at the left side. I'm looking from the left side. It's decreasing. So this is infinitely that way. So it's decreasing from negative infinity up to this point. Now, when we do intervals, we're looking at the x values. So now we're looking at the x values. So it's decreasing from negative infinity to negative 1.935. And then from here, 
Now it's increasing. It increases, increases, increases up until you reach this high point, which is 0 0.962. Okay. Uh, by the way, if I read a number wrong, please tell me. So, so now it's increasing. That's increasing. It's going up. So it's negative 1.935 up to 0 0.962. Okay. Now it's decreasing. So it's decreasing here. It's decreasing, decreasing, and stuff here. So I'm starting at 0 0.962. We put a little union symbol, then 0 0.962, down to 3.224. Okay? And then it's increasing after that. So increasing after that, so that's union. Increasing after that is going to be uh, 3.224 and it doesn't stop going up so it's infinity. Okay, that's interval notation. That's interval notation. Yeah, but I'm not done with the intervals of increase and decrease. What I want to do is show you how to write the other way. Right? We, remember we did it two ways. We did interval notation, and that's what this is. And then we're going to use inequalities. So inequalities looks like this. So, so this is anything less than negative 1.936, or 35, what that is. So to the left of that, so that was x is less than negative 1.935. Oops, that's down here. x is less than negative 1.935. So these two are the exact same thing. This is the interval notation. This is the inequality notation. Okay? And then, uh, interval of increasing, that's up here. So when it's like this, you just put the two numbers. So let me, right here. So that's going to be negative 1.935 less than x, less than, and then the other x value, 0 0.962. So that's how you use the inequalities for that interval, right? The inequalities. So I started at negative 1.935, and I end at 0 0.962. Why is there a man peeking in our door? You guys see him? No, I saw him. Sure. Punch it. Is he bummed? Yeah, same place. Yeah. I saw him walk by. Okay. Shit. All right, and then this one, 0 0.962, this is now decreasing. This is the decreasing interval. Remember, you're looking at the x values. So it's 0 0.962 less than x, less than the ending x value, 3.224. Okay? I'm just doing this for those people who prefer one or the other, okay? You don't have to write both of them. You just have to write one of them. Which one do you prefer? Yes. All right. I hate when my does that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then this interval here, going up from 3.224, it's going up from 3.224, so that means that x is greater than 3.224, alright. Wait, would it be greater than or equal to, or just greater than? Just greater than, okay? So whenever I ask for intervals of increasing or decreasing, no equal to bar. Just put greater than or less than. Okay. All right. Uh, maxima. Maxima. How many of those are there? One. Okay. The maxima is a high point, so that's the maxima. Right there. And that's the coordinates 0 0.962, 1.202. That's not interval notation. That's an ordered pair. Okay. So if you get confused between... Well, when is an interval notation? When is it an ordered pair? Then use the inequality, okay? You don't have to write both ed, both ways, just write it one way. But ordered pairs, you don't have any choices. That's the way you gotta write an ordered pair. Minima, where is the minima? There's two of them. There's two of them, okay? So there's one down here, and that is negative 1.935, negative 4.813. So that's one minimum, and the other minimum is over here. What do you mean? So what? Would we put the union symbol? No, you don't, because this is not interval notation. These are just ordered pairs. Okay. 
So it's a list. So you, if you put anything, you put a comma. But I'm not going to be grading you on your grammar, okay? So that's the other minimum. So we got one at 3.224 comma negative 1.906. That's the minimum. Okay. Well, why is there two? Why is there two? Yeah. Because there's two local ones. There's one down here and one over here. And remember, the importance of these low points is that it gives the graph shape. So you, if you recognize the low points and the high points, then you have an idea what the shape looks like. Okay. Right. And behavior. Uh, so, here. so limit as x goes to infinity. So I always do this one first. No good reason. So as x goes to infinity, so that's the right hand side. Right? What's the right hand side doing? It's going up. It's going up. All right, now let's look at the left-hand side. Now, someone asked me today, do we have to write all this crap? The answer is yes. Okay? And the reason why I'm saying that is because I have noticed among my calculus students that they just don't, or they don't want to. And what happens is they miss the whole problem because they leave off an important part. Okay? If you just get in the habit of writing something like this, it's probably in your best interest. I, I know it doesn't change from problem to problem. I just want you to get in the habit of doing it. Okay? All right. So limit of f of x as x goes to negative infinity is... So what's happening on the left-hand side? It's going up. It's going up, too. So this one's also infinity. About negative infinity? No, it's positive. Because it's going up. Okay? All right, zero is with their multiplicity. So look at where it crosses the x-axis. The x-axis is up here. All right, this is the x-axis. So Whoa. it's not bouncing, right? These aren't, these aren't bouncing or leveling off, so these are the values. Negative 3, 0, 2, and 4. So you just write that down. So there's no multiplicity, so I'm just going to write them all together. Negative 3, 0, 2, and 4. There it was. There's the negative 3 right here. There's the 0. There's the 2. And there's the 4. Okay, minimum degree. Count the number of terms, then add 1. How many terms are there? There are 3. three. three. So 1, 2, 3, plus 1 makes it a 4, 3. Simple math. Yeah. All right, so that's the weird ball example that I forgot to put on the regular examples. Okay? All right, now we're going to address this point. So it's one thing to analyze a graph when you have the graph. It's much easier to analyze a graph when you have a graph. Wait, is this for when you don't have a graph? Right, you'd be given information like this. No. So you're only given the function, and I'm not, you're not given the graph. But I'm not going to ask you for a lot of stuff. Like, I'm not going to ask you what's the min, what's the max. I'm only going to ask you uh, n behavior and the maximum number of zeros. Okay? n behavior and the maximum number of zeros. All right. So, do you remember what an odd number is? What's an odd number? Uh, a number that can Anyone that you can divide by two. Ah, not that small. You can divide anything by two. Yeah. Well, that would be 5 by 2. You mean if it's divisible by 2. So it's a little bit different language, right? Divisible by 2 means you divide by 2 and you get no remaining. Right? You understand? So that, I'm trying to distinguish the language. You can divide anything by 2, but is it divisible by 2? Okay? So yeah, so you got, you're on the right track. So it's, if it's divisible by 2, it's an even number. But what, and you said if it's not divisible by 2, it's an odd number. Can you describe it any other way? Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> I want to give a stupid answer here, but I don't know. Um, any number that cannot be halved 
about the decimal. Okay, that's what he said. All right. Well, here's a really cheap way, and yeah, maybe you were th thinking of it. The cheap way is any number that ends with one, three, five, seven, or nine. Any number that ends with one, three, five, seven, or nine. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Anything. And that was perfectly fine. An even number is any number that ends with zero, two, four, six, or eight. <laughs> okay. So half the numbers are even. Half the numbers are odd. Okay. Do you remember how to find a degree of a polynomial? What's the degree of this polynomial? Uh, three. Degree, degree. Quadratic. Just tell me the no. the number. Just give me the number. Four. Four. This one? Uh, three. Yes. Is it three, four, or two? Three. 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 You just look at the highest exponent. I was going to add them. No, don't <laughs> add them. It's just the highest. So B, what's the degree? Two. Two. C, what's the degree? Four. D? Five. That's it, okay. So when I say odd degree, which one of these, A, B, C, or D, are odd degrees? Uh, a. 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 a and D. Okay? So the even degrees are B and C. All right, now, there's something up here that I forgot to list, and it's the word leading coefficient. Oh. I've heard that before. Good. Leading coefficient. All right, now, what does it mean? So, so you look at the highest term, highest degree term, and you look at the number in the front. What's the number? One. one. So the leading coefficient here is one. What's the leading coefficient in B? Negative, Negative one. Negative one. What's the leading coefficient in C? Four. 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 D. Negative three. Easy, right? That part's easy. Alright. So if I have an odd degree and the leading coefficient is positive, okay? If the leading coefficient is positive, this is what the end behavior looks like. You say the limit as x goes to infinity, so this is the right-hand side of the function, is positive infinity. The right-hand side, limit as x goes to negative infinity, 